Nobody is buying hydrogen fuel cell trucks, at least in the Netherlands. According to the Dutch government, around 1,400 requests were filed for battery electric trucks in their new incentive program for 2023. And out of all 1,400, there were approximately zero filed for hydrogen fuel cell trucks. As a matter of fact, this specific Dutch scheme was supposed to remain open to applicants until the end of this year. But just within 24 hours, it received requests north of 120 million euros, and the process for the schemes was immediately closed to new applications. And yes, you heard that right. It has emerged that all of the 1,600 applications for that program, ranging anywhere between 17,000 to 131,000 euros per vehicle, were dedicated for only battery electric trucks. There was not a single subsidy request for a hydrogen fuel cell unit. As we all know, battery trucks are said to be cheaper in the short term to buy, maintain, and operate because of the lagging infrastructure for hydrogen fuel cells. But like I've said multiple times, in the long term, the value proposition for a fuel cell powertrain is most likely going to overshadow the short-term benefits of investing in battery electric. But the data that we have just received from the Netherlands seems to be showing an exact opposite reaction where nobody is investing a dime in hydrogen. Is this just an anomaly or is this actually a long-term trend that could start to develop in the state of Europe? That question is exactly what I want to address in this video, along with understanding what could be the long-term benefits and disadvantages of a battery-only fleet. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So to start things off, let's try to understand what exactly has been going on in the Netherlands to create such a big dilemma between hydrogen fuel cells and battery electric. And well, the story is pretty simple. Out of the 1600 applicants for the voucher, just like we're seeing here in the US from California and New York, only 1600 of them were battery electric, meaning approximately zero of them were for hydrogen. And although this seems extremely bad on the surface, there are some reasons specifically for the Netherlands why this is happening. And I think the first reason is pretty obvious, folks. The Netherlands is a very small European country. About the size of Maryland or West Virginia here in the US, the Netherlands does not have a single route that is anywhere between 300 to 500 miles across borders. That means that a hydrogen powertrain whose benefits are mostly realized over a 500 mile range are going to have very little benefits for customers and fleets that are based and registered in that country. On top of that, it turns out there are only a handful of hydrogen OEMs in the country that actually sell commercially available hydrogen fuel cell trucks. And the two companies happen to be Hyundai and Hyzon. And well, recent data from 2022 has shown us that there are approximately only 27 hydrogen fuel cell trucks in the country and around 400 battery electric trucks. They have automakers like DAF and BYD that have actually built assembly lines in the country, heavily subsidized by the government that is, but still extremely motivating for consumers and customers in the country. This is most likely a big reason why battery electric sales in the state have been growing far faster than hydrogen electric, because right now the country is not only small, but their demands are mostly focused towards near-term solutions. And you can quite clearly see that with how TDS ordered 10 BYD e-trucks in Netherlands in 2021. Trucks like these are what we consider most suited for the battery electric powertrain that are short-term point-to-point and back-to-base operations, which are very popular in the Dutch state. So does this mean that the hydrogen industry should come to a complete standstill and there should be no more investments in this space? Well, not quite, because guess what? This is exactly the roadblocks we faced with the battery electric automotive industry in the early 2000s. Believe it or not, the very first electric vehicle on planet Earth was introduced 
way back in the 1890s. But only so far this decade is when we're starting to see them commercially adopted on the roads. It's pretty clear that technological innovation and skill is what drives down the cost. Right now, battery electric is cheaper to operate because there's simply more skill, more manufacturers, and more companies in the space that are developing the technology, not only to create new products around it, but also reduce the supply chain and operating costs of those vehicles. Hydrogen right now is where battery electric technologies were, let's say in the 1990s, when they were in a very limited and rare use case. And the different thing here with hydrogen is that the main way costs are gonna come down is gonna be through industrial decarbonization first and then followed into the consumer end sectors like trucks and cars. It's the big reason why something like the Toyota Mirai or the Hyundai Nexo have not sold that much because even though the products are very, very good on the surface, and customer reviews of their design and practicality is very high, the infrastructure bottleneck still exists, mostly because there is no demand for trucks, because there are no trucks on the road, which reduces retail demand for the fuel. Because on paper, if we disregard cost, scale, and infrastructure, the benefits of a fuel cell powertrain far outweigh the benefits of a battery electric one because not only can you refuel in a matter of minutes, but you can have a longer range and increase that range by simply adding more compressed hydrogen tanks, which are much lighter than adding more batteries. On top of that, we also know that batteries take up a lot of minerals and resources like cobalt and lithium. This isn't necessarily a problem if you're using them on a limited scale, but because of just how low energy density batteries provide, it requires them to have a lot of minerals for a competitively same amount of energy capacity. This obviously isn't going to be a problem for smaller vehicles like cars, like we're seeing with the rate of adoption today. But with trucks, which are expected to carry 10 times the amount of energy capacity as your average Tesla Model 3, this issue around minerals and sustainability is going to scale even faster. I mean, there's a reason why we are so addicted to the internal combustion engine, and it's all due to its practicality, where you can separate where the energy is produced from where you actually use it. Because at the end of the day, the consumers of gasoline products are not the ones that are making the gasoline infrastructure themselves. Because for most EVs on the road today, people are charging them at home using their own wall outlets. And in many cases, for commercial companies that are looking to electrify their fleets, those businesses have to add their own charging stations to fill their power demands. Unlike in the gasoline or hydrogen space, you don't have big corporations like Shell or ExxonMobil providing the services for customers of those products. And this is a big reason why infrastructure costs for fuel cell electric trucks shown in dark blue here in the long term with scale are actually going to fall, whereas for battery electric solutions, the costs are going to go up. And although up to a certain point, batteries perform fantastically for balancing and buffering the electric grid for renewable energy, for larger applications, whether that be for buses, aircraft, or shipping containers, you're going to need a fuel that is just as versatile as electricity, but does not need permanent infrastructure to transport from one place to the other. This is a big reason why gasoline and diesel are so popular in today's day and age, and hydrogen offers a similar versatility where you can transport it in the form of a fuel. And that right there is the reason why it's taking longer for hydrogen trucks to play catch up with battery electric solutions in Europe. Because investments are only just being now made in the molecular transportation and logistics of hydrogen fuel, which in turn over the long term will spark demand for fuel cell trucks. Putting together an electric charging station is a lot cheaper and easier than integrating a fuel cell refueling station. 
But like I just showed you, the returns for that refueling station in the long term are going to be higher than of that one charging station, which is why the European Union announced this H2 Accelerate program, which is now expected to invest in not only infrastructure, but also innovation around the technology of fuel cell powertrains. After having raised around $30 million in a funding round just last month, this H2 Accelerate collaboration is going to announce around eight heavy-duty hydrogen refueling stations in Europe over the next two years and enable the deployment of approximately 150 more hydrogen trucks. These numbers clearly go to show you that the hydrogen industry in Europe right now is extremely nascent, only right now for the fuel cell trucking space. Whereas on the back end for infrastructure, hydrogen production and logistics, there are already a lot of projects in place that are allowing companies and businesses to lower their reliance on the electric grid. And based on their research, companies are more than willing to invest in hydrogen trucks if they become cost competitive with diesel, which the H2 Accelerate program expects to happen by 20 30 in the European Union. What do you guys think? Is that a realistic take from the H2 Accelerate program? Or is what's happening in the Dutch state going to happen across the rest of the world? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And I thank you very much for watching.